my daily routine is designed for maximum efficiency. Years of observation and trial and error have produced this regimen. Each element serves a specific purpose, and this is my ideal morning routine. I have eight elements to take care of, drinking my morning green shake, meditating, journaling, practicing gratitude, reviewing goals, brainstorming the one thing, checking my calendar, and working out. The green shake is a necessity. It contains concentrated nutrients that increase alertness and cognitive function. The body requires proper fuel for optimal performance. This mixture seems particularly effective, and the elimination of bodily toxins is an added benefit. Here's how it might look like. One green apple or kiwi, one chunk of ginger, one chunk of turmeric, one two lemon, handful of parsley, handful of leafy greens, spinach, chard, or kale. I've experimented with meditation for many years and have formalized the practice more recently. The purported benefits, calm under pressure, improved focus, enhanced well-being and clarity on life direction, intrigued me enough to explore it further. My experience with meditation has yielded demonstrably improved focus throughout the day. Additionally, it has facilitated a clearer understanding of my long-term goals. The reliance on pharmaceutical solutions for focus is a practice I find illogical. The industry operates on a cycle of dependence, creating new problems with each attempt at a solution. I've been using the Calm app for guided meditation, and it's worked well for me. With this being said, there's other apps out there that might work better for you. I like Calm because it provides a new, quick 10-minute practice each morning. Calm eliminated the barriers of entry for me to get started meditating, and I believe it provides a solid foundation for anyone who is starting out. This one is probably the toughest for me, but I have noticed if I journal immediately after meditation, I'm able to document the observations of my mind during my practice. Sometimes my journaling will be deep and insightful. Other times it shows me how busy my mind really is. Contrary to popular belief, each meditation practice isn't a super deep, insightful experience. Oftentimes it's sitting for 10 minutes observing a racing mind jumping from thought to thought. If you're anything like me, some days the mind is simply overwhelmed with the endless to-do list of what's going on at work. The meditation and journaling combo helps get the endless jumping thoughts on paper, which allows me to structure a productive way to tackle my never-ending to-do list. On the other hand, there are days where the mind is quiet during meditation. This usually happens once every week or two if I'm practicing consistently. When the mind is quiet during meditation, pathways are opened to deeper personal insight. These days are fun. This is when I'm able to get clear on solutions to problems I've been lodging away in the back of my mind. Sometimes, I'm able to gain clarity on personal issues I'm dealing with. Keeping a post-meditation journaling practice allows for a space to put insightful thoughts on paper. Once I'm done with brain dumping my thoughts in my journal, I'll move to writing down my gratitudes. This is simply a place for me to write down anything I'm thankful for in my life. This habit encourages me to find things to be grateful for even on days when I'm tired, worn out, stressed, or overwhelmed. The habit of practicing gratitudes reminds me that I can always find something to be thankful for. At the beginning of each new year, I create goals for my professional, personal, and physical areas of life. I write down where I'd like to be in three years for each category, and then break each goal down into two-year, yearly, quarterly, monthly, and weekly milestones. By having a clear macro vision of where I plan to be in three years, I can break the goals down to an actionable micro level. This micro level action plan provides a framework for clarity on what needs to be accomplished on a daily basis to achieve the long-term goals. It's easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day and lose sight of the needle-moving activities. Reading goals each morning is a powerful process to keep the most important tasks top of mind to move the needle. As mentioned above, I break each goal down into columns associated with three-year, two-year, yearly, quarterly, monthly, and weekly. I start by reading the three-year column and move down the line until I get to the weekly column. Upon reading the weekly goals, I ask myself the following question. What is the one thing that I can do today that, if done, would make everything else easier or unnecessary? By answering this question truthfully each day, Clarity is defined for what task takes priority to move the needle. Taking small, consistent action steps is a better plan than trying to change the world all in one day. 
asking myself this one simple question for each category of life has helped me get crystal clear on what daily actions to prioritize. More broadly, the one thing can refer to searching for the fundamental truth, a central purpose, or the most important aspect of life. This could be a personal quest for meaning or focus. After getting clear on my one thing question, I pull up the calendar I have on my phone to find open time slots to time block each proactive task that needs to be completed. Pulling up my calendar also doubles as a personal reminder to what I have on the books for the current day. This decreases the chance of missed tours or meetings on my end. I find open time slots in my day and book the proactive tasks to help move closer to my goals. I've learned by sticking to what I write down, there's a good chance I'll get close to accomplishing my proactive tasks within the time block I've allocated. Last but not least, this one is an absolute no-brainer and non-negotiable for me. As I look back on my obsession with personal development, this is the one that started it all. As an athlete growing up, I learned quickly that I could have control over my strength, physique, and athletic performance by disciplining myself in the gym. There was a direct positive correlation between hours spent in the gym and performance on the field. I learned at a young age that mental discipline in the gym reaped huge rewards. Not to mention, working out also provided a great rush of positive, feel-good endorphins. I've learned that lifting, cardio, and high-intensity interval training workouts are proven to be amazing for brain performance. This routine is a tool. It creates optimal conditions for success, whatever that means to the individual. These habits are not about feeling good or achieving some vague sense of enlightenment. They are about maximizing one's potential and maintaining control over one's own life.